Greetings dear friends, we are the Pleiadian Collective, return to speak with you once again. Now, we have been speaking to many of you silently, and we want you to know, that our presence is felt all around the world. Many of you are our, our friends, family, and you have been visiting with us in your nighttime rejuvenations and we assure you, we are no stranger to those who are reading these messages of light, of love. I am Mira. Much changes afoot, it is true. I have been working non-stop with our other hard-working team around the clock for Team Ascension Earth. Much is shifting, unfolding, in ways that we cannot express fully at this most auspicious now. But we charge you to keep the faith, to keep your faith and to utilize these high vibe energies that are permeating your bodies your atoms, your very essence with source light. Allow these energies of these times to catapult you higher. Use them, they are here to bless you, and to stir the pot as you say, of change. They are ushering in change. You, our ground team, are to be the changing, to hold the light, to teach the others at first by example, and then as the questions come, through thoughtful responses peppered with love and forgiveness, for they may not well receive you at first, which is why I said forgiveness, but you are well used to this, and so use discernment, always, listen through your high heart, listen to its call, become one with your heart, I am a mirror of the earth council, Pleiadian division, much love is being poured down on you now, feel it, soak it up, and let it in, it becomes you, you were meant to be beings of love and light, and you are, we have not forgotten, it is time you remember your truth, your passion, your calling, for the heavens are calling you home, and we want to reassure you, assure you, that indeed all is going most smoothly, even though it may feel rocky down below, now many of you need to start keeping your eyes out for us, your Pleiadian counterparts, we will be in human form, hologram, you will know us by our essences, if you are looking and listening to your heart, the time has come for more connections to be lovingly made, with our precious ground team, I mirror will be one of them, I am most eager for this, I am mirror, we are the Arcturian collective, much love is being showered upon you, it is true as our Pleiadian counterparts have expressed, we wish you to feel the love in these words, in these transmissions, we wish for you to sense the freedom within them, for you are as free as you envision, intend, it is true, do you intend to be free, do you intend to be abundant, or are you simply rolling along, now we charge you, most lovingly, to see you as we see you, as vastly powerful beings who took an amnesia pill for a bit, but are now in the process of waking up, claim your power, it is time, we are the Arcturian Collective, and we hold you in high esteem. It has been our pleasure to connect with you this day. On behalf of the Galactic Federation and the Spiritual Hierarchy, we greet you. We would like to assure you that we are of the light, and that we come to you in the service of your Creator to assist and advise you so that you may better understand and react to the changes which will soon be upon you and your planet. With your limited vision, and your relationship with self-entedness and conflict, you may be tempted to suspect that we have come to harm or to conquer you. There are indeed forces in your universe who might have such intentions, but their powers have been largely neutralized at this time. I have already assured you and gladly assure you once again that we are of the light, and that we are here for your benefit. The time has now come for a general movement upwards, a sorting of those who are ready to move up, and those who are not. Your planet is to be cleansed physically as well as on the spiritual level, for she has suffered much harm in acting as your host. It is important that you have some idea of what lies immediately ahead and why it is to take place, so that you may prepare yourselves. This is our first task. You have collectively made great advances in science and technology, but in so doing, you have often neglected another important source of information, namely your intuition, in your obsession with things physical, Things which can be seen, felt, measured and tested, you have gained the impression that if you cannot see or feel it, it cannot therefore exist. Your eyes are closed to any possibilities outside your own area of recognition. But I must tell you, that there is more unseen than is seen, there is more uncomprehended than comprehended, there is more to your world and your universe than you could presently imagine. The density of matter is important. 
Physical objects have different densities. People's physical frames have different densities, so also do worlds. We are of a lighter, finer density that you, as also are the manifestations which you call spirits or ghosts. Place some pebbles in a sieve, then pour water over them and see how the finer density of water allows it to pass around the denser pebbles. That is why ghosts can pass through walls. That is how our spacecraft can move about invisibly to your eyes, though we are able to make ourselves visible to your senses at will. That is why there is so much going on around you that is invisible to your eyes. Planet Earth at present exists on the densest possible level as a reflection of the environment in which you live and conduct yourselves and the lessons you have chosen to learn. Each planet or universe or civilization has its constitution, similar in spirit and in turn to the constitutions of your more evolved governments. The concept of constitution is to lay down the outer, absolute boundaries of approved behavior beyond which neither individuals nor governments may pass. Planet Earth has been given the gift of free will, as have many others, but unlike others, your free will has been given without boundaries, thus you have been able to go to extremes of violence and self-gratification at the expense of others, extremes which in other civilizations would not be permitted. In this way you yourselves, and all of us who observe you and experience your world by correlation, can learn of the effects which such actions can set in motion, but this situation will shortly come to an end, for now is a time of sorting and of moving upwards. It is a time of revision, of assessment, of taking new paths. It includes your entire planet, and indeed a much wider circle of worlds beyond your own. Your planet is to be cleansed, and its people will move to new worlds according to their evolution and aspirations, in order to learn new lessons in new environments. This will give each individual the opportunity to review his or her life and attitudes, and to consider the kind of future to which he or she aspires. Having given you just a brief idea of what is to happen very shortly around you, I must now tell you of the task we have been given by Earth's spiritual guides and hierarchy, and how we propose to set about fulfilling our responsibilities. It is our intent to use what in your language might be referred to as the carrot and the stick. The stick is not, as you might at first think, a weapon to be raised in aggression or anger or envy. This is not our way. Indeed the constitution of our lives and civilization does not permit any of these things. The stick we will use is a rod of protection, and it is strict, tolerating no exceptions. Already you will find that your weapons of war are losing their effectiveness. Over time these, physical weapons will disintegrate into dust, their aura of aggression and anger will be neutralized along with their physical form. You will also find that anything used as a weapon of aggression, even a stick or a fist raised in anger, will be stayed by an unseen hand. Ultimately, you will find that when any words are to be spoken in anger or aggression, the voice of the speaker will falter as if gently choking, so that such words may not be expressed. Finally, as the din of war is gradually stilled and a spirit of peace descends upon your planet, we hope to reinforce it with an enveloping blanket of love and goodwill. You must understand that although you may think that victory is an achievement providing its rewards, you should know that the continuance of war and competitive aggression which is a constant feature of your planet has taken its toll upon your emotions and your senses, creating a continuing tension. As this burden is progressively lifted you will find yourselves lightening, becoming more joyful, more able to see the beauty around you and the light in the souls of others. Perhaps you with your tradition of total free will, may feel that this is an unwarranted intrusion into your liberty, although you may well agree in principle that the neutralization of all anger and aggression, together with all weapons of war would be a wonderful thing, you may not feel altogether comfortable with its imposition by an alien and foreign force, yet I must tell you that such rules are not unusual. Indeed your planet is almost unique in permitting such activities, which are not within the constitutional bounds of other civilizations. Many of you may also feel that while an end to violence is a good thing in principle, it is necessary first of all to repay debts, to claim the eye for the eye. But I must tell you that such vendettas, such acts of violence followed by countervailance in the name of honor, these acts have been going on for centuries in your collective lives. Somewhere, at some time, the perpetuation of violence must stop. This is now the place and the time. I must also explain that if we are to help you, as we have been instructed to do, 
We must first ask you to be still. We cannot help and advise those who are too busy killing one another to listen to our words. If you could see your planet from outer space as we do all the time, you would see a murky aura of accumulated hate and aggression, and your ears would be deafened by the constant clamor and din of war, the shooting and the bombs, the cries of the wounded and the dying, and the destruction of so much of the physical assets of your civilization which you have, previously built with expenditure of great effort and planetary resources. If only the effort you have put into destruction and rebuilding could have been directed into, preserving and enhancing, a building upon building. Imagine how rich your civilization would now appear, but that is your destiny and it is not for us to question it, only to point out that if you are to listen, to be informed, to improve your conduct and make a right decision when needed to do so, then you must first be stilled. Our stick will be the rod of protection, ensuring that acts of aggression are halted so that the clash of war may be stilled and the spirit of aggression, of violence and revenge may be quietened. The carrot of persuasion will take the form of suggestions as to how you may conduct your lives more peaceably, more spiritually, with the reward that in so doing you may be more ready to move to a higher level of being. It is a hope that as you pause for a moment in your aggression and counter-aggression, when your ears are no longer filled with a din of war and your senses not fully preoccupied with getting the better of others before they get the better of you, in that stillness and space of neutrality you may be persuaded to begin afresh and to build for yourselves a society where relationships are based on mutual respect, non-aggression and cooperation, on construction rather than destruction. A daunting, perhaps even impossible task. No. Indeed it is much easier done than imagined, in other societies more developed than your own, there is one guiding principle of conduct between people. It is a simple rule. First, do no harm. You must start early with your very youngest children, as we also do, teaching them what is to us the most important rule of life, respect others as you would have them respect you. Think no unkind thoughts, say no unkind words, for one only puts others down in order to make oneself feel greater, learn to value yourself for what you are. Build upon your incarnated foundation, develop yourself and your natural gifts remembering only that you should enrich your own life without impoverishing that of others. Emotionally, spiritually or physically, your governments too must reform themselves rapidly, for despite the belief which many hold that they live in a democracy, in truth few people trust their governments to act competently, honestly and efficiently. The purpose of government, in the words of your Thomas Jefferson, is to prevent men from injuring one another. If only you had but one government which did just that which ensured peace and true social justice among its people, acting productively without undue waste, with honesty and transparency, with the interests of the people, its customers, at heart, you would never believe the beneficial, almost magical effect it would have. With that one principle, there would be physical plenty for all to live challenging and rewarding lives in a pleasant environment on a respected planet. As you shed your aggressive competitiveness, competing only with ignorance to create knowledge, competing only with poverty to create wealth which all may share, conducting your collective lives according to the principle of mutual respect and cooperation, so all the dark, dank places you have created for yourselves will be changed and brightened. Those who have been put down will find new freedom to make their own contribution, and the harm done to your host planet can slowly be undone. There will be little enough time for this new spirit to take root. But if you can only pause from your aggression long enough to enjoy the stillness of peace, if you can order your collective affairs according to universal laws long enough to glimpse the rewards of peace, justice and cooperation, and if experiencing these things each of you can profit from your new environment in order to review your personal attitudes, your approach to yourself and to others, you will then be in a position to embrace a brighter future. It is our wish to remain with you and to communicate with you constantly in order to give you a wider view of that which you cannot see, of developments around you and how they will affect you, and in our behavior towards you, we will show you the creative, nurturing power of love, of mutual caring and assistance which we hope that you too will embrace among yourselves.
We, the Pleiadians and Arcturians are being called on by more and more of the beings on Gaia to assist humanity with their process of transmutation. It is important that humanity begins this process of expanding their perceptual field to encompass the fourth dimensional frequency of reality in preparation for expanding their consciousness to encompass the fifth dimensional frequency of reality. The first component of yourself that you will transmute will be your consciousness. Your consciousness is much more flexible and transmutational than your physical earth vessel. Your physical earth vessel is limited to the third dimension. However, your consciousness, which is the combination of your thoughts and emotions, is more able to alter, enhance, and or expand your frequency of consciousness. You will know what frequency of consciousness that you are resonating to by the thoughts and emotions that work together to create your state of consciousness. Your state of consciousness is the frequency of consciousness to which you resonate within the now of your daily life, as well as your sleeping, and or meditating, states of consciousness. Your state of consciousness and or your frequency of consciousness is something over which you have control. However, in order to control your state, frequency of consciousness, you will need to be a loving mentor to your many thoughts and emotions. We, your Pleiadian and Arcturian family, realize how very difficult your third dimensional reality can be. It is for this reason that we invite you all to come to our starships which are just beyond the tracking mechanisms of your third dimensional machines. However, we are not beyond your third dimensional imagination. Imagination is something that only humans have, and it is a component of your fourth and or fifth dimensional state of consciousness. Your state of consciousness is the frequency of the synaptic junctions within your physical brain, and it is greatly influenced by your reactions and interactions with your third dimensional reality. There are many challenges in your third dimensional reality that do not exist within your higher dimensional frequencies of consciousness. Your frequency, or state of consciousness, determines what you choose to perceive in your outer third dimensional reality, as well as the thoughts and emotions that exist within your heart and mind. The emotions that resonate to your heart chakra are more likely to direct your attention onto that which you love, and that which you wish to experience. However, if you want to have a certain experience of reality, you will need to go inside your own thoughts, as what you think about, you bring about. Therefore, to be the master of your reality you need to have a degree of mastery over your thoughts and emotions. What do we mean by the term mastery over in this situation? What we mean by mastery over is that you are able to have a degree of mastery over your self-judgment. If you judge yourself and do not recognize it, it may be because you grew up with too much judgment in your childhood and or present life that judgment becomes normal. When judgment is normal whether it is self-judgment, or judgment against others, you may have learned to pretend that it does not hurt you. Then, as you move forward into their life, you may allow self-judgment against and or from others, to quietly move into their daily thoughts and emotions. It is then, that you forget the loving, inner messages that come from your higher self. Then you may also forget that you are a galactic representative to Earth. Dear brave volunteers to take an Earth vessel during this now in which Gaia is being damaged and disregarded more and more each day, we, the members of your galactic family, wish to remind you that you are not alone. We see how so many of you are doing your best to assist Gaia telling others of Gaia plight and constantly sending unconditional love and violet light into the body of Gaia. It is in this manner that you can greatly assist Gaia with her healing and with her transmutation back into her innate fifth dimensional planetary self. The problem is that many humans are not yet able to perceive Gaia as a living being. Therefore, Instead of taking care of Gaia and loving her in the same manner that they would care for and love a member of their family, they treat Gaia Earth as a thing. It is for this reason that we, the members of your fifth dimensional galactic family, have come into the consciousness of as many humans as possible. Unfortunately, too often, 
It takes much of a human Earth time before they believe that Earth is an alive planetary being, just as they are alive human beings. In fact, too often, humans forget that just as humans are alive, Gaia Earth is also alive. Humanity may think of trees as being alive, as they offer wood for them to build with and fruits that they can eat. Unfortunately, only the awakened humans are able to think of trees, flowers, crops, animals, and even, Gaia, as living beings that need the same amount of attention and love as humans. In other words, far too many humans see the nature beings as things. They see the ocean as a place where they can dump their trash and or release the toxins from their ships, and they see the air as something that is not harmed by pollutants from their cars and factories. This behavior is because they do not perceive the earth as a living being. Instead, they perceive the trees as something to cut down or use to make money for themselves. Do they care that they do not harvest the trees in an ecological fashion? Yes, some humans do. But many humans do not have the perception that Gaia is a living being. Of course, anyone who would choose to read this post does care about Gaia and probably does try their best to send Gaia the unconditional love that she deserves. Many of us, the Galactics, have taken human Earth vessels in the hopes that humans would listen to us more if we appeared to be humans. However, the many humans who do not remember their Galactic self, or the mission that they chose to take during this current embodiment, are not at all interested in giving service to Gaia. It is for that reason that a great deal of Galactics chose to take an Earth vessel within your now in the hope that they could find a way to awaken humanity multidimensional memory about why they chose to take an Earth vessel within this now. Hence. We ask you to go into your highest states of consciousness to remember the mission that you chose before you took your current Earth vessel. We will give you some clues by asking you some questions. First, what do you love to do? That love is the doorway to the mission that you have chosen. Second, how do you feel if you do not pursue that which you love to do? In fact, take a moment to remember how much you miss doing that which you love to do. Within this moment, Feel how this act fulfills you. Third, what did you love to do as a child? As a child, your imagination was more alive and a component of your daily reality. This is because your imagination is often that which you remember from your multidimensional self, who you forgot when you grew up. When you were a child, you could remember more of your higher dimensional reality, as it was fine for a child to have a strong imagination. However, the hardships and challenges of adulthood often made you forget your higher dimensional life because you had to focus on the work you had to do. But, fortunately, many of you did not forget about your imagination. In fact, some of you decided to trust, and even follow, the inner messages that you received. Sometimes you chose to follow the messages that came from your own, inner self rather than to follow the outer voices that too often said, no you can do that. As a child, your imagination was more alive and a component of your daily reality. This is because your imagination is often that which you remember from your multidimensional self who you forgot when you grew up. When you were a child, you could remember more of your higher dimensional reality, as it was fine for a child to have a strong imagination. However, the hardships and challenges of adulthood often made you forget your higher dimensional life because you had to focus on the work you had to do. But, fortunately, many of you did not forget about your imagination. In fact, some of you decided to trust, and even to follow, the inner messages that you received. Sometimes you chose to follow the messages that came from your own, inner self rather than to follow the outer voices that too often said, no you can do that. Once you made that decision to follow the love inner voice of yourself, which is your own higher self, you could even allow this higher self to assist you to release the constant hum of the outer voices that too often said, no you can. With the release of the no you can voice, it was much easier for you to follow your loving voice that said, yes I can. As you decided to follow the loving, 
sweet, inner voice, rather than the angry or disapproving outer voice, you became stronger and stronger within your own self. It was then, that you could allow your childhood imagination to get equal credit as the outside authority figures. In fact, over time, your inner voice became more powerful than the outside authority voice. As you listened more and more to your own inner voice, which you now recognize as being filled with unconditional love, you allowed more and more dreams and fantasies to arise from deep within yourself. You learned at a young age not to discuss or reveal what your inner voice told you. Fortunately, many times you did decide to follow the advice of your own inner, loving self. Fortunately, as you grew older and moved into adulthood, you became tired of hiding the you that you most enjoyed. But, if you came out would your human friends still want to be around you? Therefore, sometimes you still decided to keep these inner voices a secret from your outside world. However, because of this compartmentalization, you became two people. You were the person who you knew was you, and you were the person that they wanted you to be. When you were a child and a teenager, Many of you really needed to keep your inner voice a secret. However, as time marched on there were the era in your life in which you could be the you that you most enjoyed inside of your own dreams, imagination, and desires. Those of you who were able to advance to this free, explorative state of consciousness felt a secret happiness because you came to realize that you were not alone. You began to realize and maybe even hear and or communicate with higher dimensional beings. Sometimes you understood the inner voice of these higher beings, but, sometimes you could not understand these communications. However, you always enjoyed them. You enjoyed the freedom of expressions and the unconditional love, which was very rare in your third dimensional reality. Then, as you were listening to yourself more and more, this self was becoming was increasingly common during your dreams, meditations and whenever you were in nature. In fact, being in nature made you feel that you were not alone. Instead, you were with Gaia many beings. Many of these beings you could see and hear with your third dimensional perceptions. However, there were other beings that you could not see, but you could hear inside of you, and most importantly, you could feel the unconditional love that seemed to flow into you. Soon you learned that if you did not document what you received from these higher dimensional and unconditionally loving beings, your 3D mind could not remember it. It was then that you began to wonder, why did I choose to take an earth vessel within this now? The mere fact that you asked that question, made you remember that there was another reality that you simultaneously lived in. However, you could not quite remember it. Fortunately, many of you discovered that if you wrote down your dreams, meditation and inner images and messages, you could read that message again and again. Then you would not forget your inner messages. Also, it was then that many of you realized that others were having the same experiences as you. You discovered this fact because you were brave enough to share the word messages from higher beings. It is interesting that it was fine to discuss the latest earth disaster, the extreme weather, and other problems in your life, but it is not okay to talk about the fairy you just saw in your morning meditation or the message you just received from your higher self. Fortunately, now there are more and more people who can have these discussions, but they are still far from the majority. Therefore, we, the members of your galactic family, ask that you, the brave members of our galactic family who chose to take a human form within your now, to please share your interdimensional experiences with others. You can call your experience a weird dream, which is true that it is a dream and a deep desire to return to the higher dimensional frequencies of Gaia. In fact, as you shared this desire with others, you likely began to remember more and more of your galactic life in which you were are orbiting Gaia in your starship and or experiencing Gaia fifth dimensional expression of reality. The reason why you forgot these realities was because it was unsafe for many, many eras to share your interdimensional experiences. Fortunately, more and more humans are beginning to remember that they took an earth vessel within this now in order to assist Gaia. In fact, many of the Gaia weather disasters are Gaia saying, help, I need your help. 
Most of the problems that have harmed Gaia are due to the Earth humans' inability to be good guardians for Gaia. Getting more money has become more important than saving Gaia. But, what will the humans do with all their money if their weather is too extreme? Huge floods and fires occur, and the entire economy collapses. It is the now, dear ones, to come to the aid of your planet. We, your galactic family, will assist you. In fact, Many of you to whom we speak are also galactics who chose to take an Earth vessel during this now in order to assist with Gaia planetary ascension back into her true fifth dimensional expression. Is it more important to work hard and make money, even if it damages Gaia? Or is it more important to put the planetary being of Gaia first, that is first before the people? For what will people do without a planet on which they can live? Gaia is calling each and every one of you. Therefore, listen to her call to assist your planet Gaia to heal from the many, many, wounds that have all been created, in some manner, by humans. Dear humans, please remember that you chose to take an Earth vessel on Gaia to heal Gaia, and to assist with planetary ascension. We, your galactic family, Realize that it is very easy to become lost in the lies and illusions that fill your third dimensional reality within this now. However, it is humanity that created all of Gaia problems. Therefore, it is up to humanity to heal their planet before it is too late. Blessings. We are your galactic family. We are here, within this now. To assist you to assist Gaia. Just ask for our guidance and we will remind you what you chose to do to assist Gaia with her planetary ascension. Blessings to you all from the Arcturians and your galactic family. Just ask for our guidance and we will remind you what you chose to do to assist Gaia with her planetary ascension.